The problem is a 45 kilogram high jumper approaches the bar at a speed of 7 meters per second. If she was able to turn all of her kinetic energy into gravitational potential energy, A, how high will she jump? And B, um, if she lands and comes to rest on a mat uh, that is about 0.8 meters high, uh, how much energy was absorbed by the mat? Okay, and then I want you to draw an energy diagram for this problem. So uh, pause the video now if you'd like and, uh, and give it a try. And then unpause to see the solution to it. So let's see what's given. Okay, let's write down what's given. And I like to draw a picture uh, of things. And so here is the level ground. Here's a, the bar, or at least on the paw, and here's the bar kind of going in. And here's the, uh, the mat that she's going to land on to cushion her fall. My brother was a high jumper in high school and he actually missed the bar once and landed right on the ground. It was not a pleasant experience. So anyway, here comes our our uh, our runner. Okay. So she's running as fast as she can, pumping her arms and and she's got a uh, let's give her some little ponytail there. Um, she has a mass of 45 kilograms and a velocity of 7 meters per second. Now she's a super good high jumper and high jumpers are tr trying, what they're trying to do is when they plant their foot, they're trying to plant their foot in such a way that all their kinetic energy uh, is directed upwards and then uh, it becomes gravitational potential energy when they're at the top. So let's show her now. Here she is at the top kind of going over you know, with their arms kind of at her side like this. This is the Fosbury flop. This is how they try to go over the bar. I guess that's kind of not to scale, is it? She shrunk, but that's what's happening. And we want to know um, what, you know, what's the height. So here's our, her height, her maximum height right there. And then she lands on the mat. So here we'll show her laying down here on the mat and all nice and safe. She's not um, moving anymore, uh, but she's not dead. Okay, she's just laying there and it cushioned her fall. So that's what this is what's given. And what are we trying to find? Uh, for A, we want to know if all of her kinetic energy turned into gravitational potential, potential energy, what's her height? And B, once she's at rest, and this is 0.8 meters, off the ground. Okay. Um, well, what happened to your energy? Um, uh, how much energy was absorbed by the mat? Now we'll call that delta E. Okay. And then uh, obviously for part C, we want a diagram of the energy. So if this helps, you know, pause the video here and see if you can uh, go on and solve the problem. Well, let's solve the problem. Let me zoom out a little bit. So let's do, let's uh, solve it. Well, to find her height, we, she has energy here at the beginning. And then she has energy up here. And she has energy here. And, but for part A, we want to know what her height is. And all of her energy, we'll say, is in uh, gravitational potential energy. And all of her energy was kinetic here. And gravity is the only thing doing work. So we'll say E1 equals E2. OK, let me zoom in a little bit. Well. Um, her energy here is kinetic energy, and that's one half her mass 
times her speed squared. And then this is all in, in her height, due to her height and weight. All the energy turned into gravitational potential energy, which is mgh. Now, her mass cancels. We didn't need to know her mass for this part. And we're going to solve for her height. h equals v squared over and then divide by g. And you have this 2 here, 2g. And when you do this, you get, um, well, 7 meters per second squared over 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared. And when you plug that into your calculator, you will get 2.5 meters. 2.5 meters. Well, let me tell you, 2.5 meters is pretty high. Um, see, 2.5 meters is about 8.3 feet. I, I think uh, she's going to break a world record if she does that. So um, what that means is that this is not a realistic answer, but it is the answer given what was asked for in this problem. You know, if she were able to turn all of her kinetic energy into gravitational potential energy, this is how high she would go. Okay. Now for part, this is all for part A. Now for part B, we want to know uh, what her change in energy is. Well, her change in energy is going to be the amount of energy, um, well, actually, this is the energy absorbed by the mat. So um, this is going to be the energy she started with. Well, she started with this much energy, E1. And then she ended up with E3. So what we'll go, instead of E final minus E initial, I'll go E3 minus E1. So let's uh, do this. E3 is mg uh, h3, which is 0.8. And this is oh, and this is minus. Put a meter minus one half m v squared. So let's go ahead and plug the numbers in. This is her, her mass. 45 kilograms times 9.8 newtons per kilogram, or meters per second squared if you prefer. 0 0.8 meters minus 1 half her mass times her speed squared. OK. Now, when you do this, you plug all this in, the energy she ended up with, when you plug that into your calculator, 352.8 joules. I did the problem ahead of time. I'm not that good. I can't do that in my head. And then uh, 1 half mb squared, when you plug that into your calculator, you should get 1,102.5 joules. Too many significant figures. We'll take care of that in a minute. So delta E is equal to negative, when you round it off, 750 joules. So plug that in your calculator and you round it off. To two significant figures, you get negative uh, 750 joules. What does that negative mean? It means this much energy was taken away. This much mechanical energy was taken away from the high jumper uh, when she landed on the mat. So when energy is taken away from the system, that's what we mean. That's what that negative means. The work done by the mat on the girl, uh, the, the energy absorbed by the mat, is negative 750 joules. Um, or you could say the mat absorbed 750 joules. But but in any case, it took it took it away from her. Now let's do uh, part uh, C, and let's draw an energy diagram of, of this. Okay, she's running towards the mat. Okay, so here's E1. Okay, now when she jumps up, okay, gravity does work on her and slows her down. 
When, now gravity is actually doing negative work. When gravity does negative work, gravity changes kinetic energy into potential energy. So this is the work done by gravity. This is gravity work. And gravity, remember, this was kinetic energy, wasn't it? And now it's, it's filling up as she rises until she gets to the very top. And when she's at the very top, it's all gravitational potential energy. Okay, then she starts to fall back down. And when she falls back down, gravity does uh, work. And it's going to turn her energy. Now, this is all gravitational potential energy. Then gravity pulls her down. And it, she's falling down. So gravity's doing positive work. When gravity does positive work, you lose gravitational potential energy. And you gain kinetic energy. Um, oh, wait a minute. OK, hold on. This diagram is not correct. She's going to gain kinetic energy. Oh, no, I, I can do this. I can do this. It's going to be a little awkward. Uh, it's going to become kinetic energy. Ah, I get it. I get it. Um, and it's going to pour into kinetic energy here. So here's our kinetic energy. But she's got a little bit of gravitational potential energy left because this is just before she hits the mat. So she'll, she's going to have a little bit of this left. But then she hits the mat. And uh, all this kinetic energy gets dispersed into the environment as the work done by the mat. This is more complicated than, oops, not by mat the person, mat the mat. Work done by the mat. OK, so her kinetic energy goes away. So what is she left with? Well, this is E, so this goes away. And this becomes delta E. This is the work done by the mat. And this is E3. She's still got a little bit of gravitational potential energy left. So the kinetic energy uh, goes away. And so really what you've got is uh, um, the delta E plus the gravitational potential energy at 3. So the one put, the, put a 2 there and a 3 there. So uh, remember, energy can't be created or destroyed. You have to account for where it goes and how it flows. And so we started off with all this kinetic energy. Then she jumped, and she reached a maximum height that was all gravitational potential energy. Then she fell down. At first, it became kinetic energy. But then she hit the mat, and that kinetic energy heated the environment. I mean, that kinetic energy was turned into heating uh, the environment by the mat. And we were left with just a little bit of um, gravitational potential energy left over. So that anyway, this was kind of complicated, but I hope uh, it helps you see what's happening. Um, this is E3 right there. And, um, um, and there we go. That's the solution to the problem. Hooray.